I'm the type of person that believes that a single moment in time can change a person's life. One of those moments for me, I, as a young child, I was the kid that struggled. And I struggled to hold still. I would tap, I would move all the time. And there was one person in my life who saw that problem as an opportunity. There was an educator and his name was Mr. Jensen. And he was the first person in my young life who created a moment by looking at the problem, my inability to sit still, as an opportunity. And that opportunity changed my life forever. But in that, that experience, Mr. Jensen, he took these sticks and he put them in my hands. He said, Clint, listen, I got these for you and I wanna give them to you. But here's the deal, you gotta promise me that you'll just keep them in your hands. He was the person that created a moment with a pair of drumsticks that allowed me to live a better story. Lasting influence is always supported by significant moments. And the better leaders get at creating moments like those in the workplace, the better they are at influencing people for good. People are people and every person wants to be heard, seen and understood. Don't look at them as a generation, look at them as people. I have seen firsthand when managers do that and they get rid of the stigma, they get rid of the stereotype, and they stop focusing on the age and they start focusing on the person. Magic, loyalty, engagement, retention, and above all, respect. I think sometimes in organizations, we're really good at developing our people. This right here, the standards piece, that's all about efficiency and growth. It's important, it's needed. We're gonna grow you. I'm gonna make you more efficient. I want our company to be better today than we were yesterday. It's awesome. But please remember this, as you're writing notes, please write this down. No significant loyalty ever happens without significant connection. You have to remember that every employee is asking you the question, let me know when it gets to the part about me. Let me know that what you do as a manager, let me know that what you're trying to implement, your, your mission statement, your vision, let me know when it considers me. And some of you might be thinking, well, those entitled little sh shining stars in my life. And I would propose that it, it's not so much about entitlement as it is about good business. It's about bringing humanity back into the workplace. I've hired hundreds of keynoters across more than a decade of running some of the highest quality events in our industry. And I'll tell you, Clint brings something special that I've not seen from any other keynoter. He brings a special blend between his personal story, the music, the drums that's always moving, to intellectual stimulation, to a very concise, complete takeaway that will allow them to not only be better employees, but to live better, more fuller lives. And that's about as meaningful of a message as you could ever have. We're excited, we're laughing, it's funny, we're crying, we have goosebumps, we're clapping, we're going to the beat of the drums. He is an awesome experience. His story is amazing. I think one of the most powerful moments in the keynote is the drum solo experience. When I sit down live on stage and we rock the house and it gives leaders the opportunity to see firsthand what influence looks like and how they can become the Mr. Jensen, the impact that they have in their people's lives. When I walk out on stage, it's my job to create an experience. And we do that literally live on stage. Everybody's got buckets, drumsticks, and it creates this engagement experience where they are learning by doing. And when you learn by doing, it just creates buy-in. It creates implementation in a way that they get to see firsthand the things that we're teaching, the things that we're, we're advocating for really truly work. That if I implement these things into my workplace, not just the drum line, I'm gonna see significant change. I'm gonna have the ability to influence my people better. The Undercover Millennial Program is a huge piece to what I talk about on stage. I would go in as the Undercover Millennial into an organization simply as someone looking for a job. I would walk up to the employee and I would just say, hey, what's it like to work here? It's amazing what they'll tell you. In a lot of companies, they do company surveys. I've got nothing wrong with company surveys. I think they can bring a lot of value. However, most employees we've found on a company survey, they don't answer 100% honestly because they're always worried what's on the other side of the survey. 
Yeah, they say that it's anonymous, but I'm just gonna give a safe answer just in case. Sometimes companies will do one-on-one -on -one management meetings or tell us how we can improve. And, and if I'm struggling at work and I'm not comfortable or if I don't like you as my manager, I'm not gonna tell you face-to-face -face how I really feel. But I will tell another millennial. In my opinion, our research through the Undercover Millennial Program provides the most real and authentic data on how great leaders were creating organizations that their people never wanted to leave. The magic of the Undercover Millennial Program was not so much found when an employee was dissatisfied with their job. The magic was found when I would ask the question, what's it like to work here? And the employee would respond with, I love it here. I love my job. I love my manager. I love what I get to do. And that's why we titled the book, I Love It Here, How Great Leaders Create Organizations Their People Never Wanted to Leave. And that's what we do. We help managers and leaders, CEOs, to learn how to become a Mr. Jensen. How do you create those single moments in time that truly change people's lives?